Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy's Doom and Bloom Show. We have a website that I'd like you to check out for preparedness advice. It's www.doomandbloom.net. We talk about collapsed medicine, survival gardening, dehydrating, and all kinds of wonderful prepping topics. But today we're going to finish talking about your survival pond. In the first part we discussed the different components of getting a healthy pond and how to start it. You need to make sure you have the filtration, the aeration, and the circulation. You need to understand the nitrogen cycle of your fish, bacteria, and plants. Once you understand those components, then you're going to be able to keep your pond healthy with or without electricity. It's very important to have a balanced pond. If you have too many fish, too much waste, you're going to have an algae growth. Also, if you have too much sunlight. So again, remember, place your pond, if you're in a south, a southern state, in a partially shaded area. Now, a lot of people are starting survival ponds because we want to grow food. We want something to eat. And tilapia have been known to be really good protein sources. This is what we have stocked in our pond currently. Once you've started with your goldfish and you found that your pond is really in balance and you don't have a, a mucky mess of, of algae slime and everything's looking really healthy, uh, make sure you do a water test before you add your tilapia or whatever fish that you plan on growing. Check your pH. A good pH for fish is between 6.5 and 7.4. Also, you need to make sure your ammonia parts per million is less than 1 and your nitrates are less than 5 point, uh, parts per million. So you want to do some water tests. Once you've figured out that this is in a good balance and everything's working well, then you can go ahead and add your tilapia. Um, tilapia will eat many varieties of food. They love green plants. We have some anacris in here. They also love duckweed. So they will eat your plants. Um, they are very ferocious algae eaters. So it's not so bad to have algae covering some of your pots on the side of the pond, on the tubing for your, your pumps, it's okay because you've noticed they nibble on that and that's their snacks. You will also feed them some protein food. You want to make sure that you give them a couple uh, feedings twice a day. Only feed your pond what they'll eat in five minutes. The extra food will be broken down and it's going to add to your algae problems. So try to keep an eye on how much this fish eat in five minutes because that's what you want to keep it down to. So once you have gotten your tilapia, you make sure they have good food sources, then you can start to think about hydroponics. Now hydroponics is growing, or aquaponics is actually a balance between growing food with water and growing fish. So it's a blending. And what you're going to do is use the pond water as your food source for your plant's roots. Now there are several different types of uh, aquaponics. You can use these little planters that have holes in them. Now these can be put into your pond. You'll see their sink. Water will flow through. The roots of the plants will absorb the nutrients which are produced by the fish and use that to grow your food. Now you can prop these up with different sizes of um, Plant, planters and stones, rocks, so things that are safe for your pond. You don't want to put um, like concrete blocks because those will give off too much alkaline and it's going to throw your pH off. So watch what you're putting into your pond. Make sure it's all safe for the fish. You can also do a floating planter in which you would drill holes or cut holes just a little bit smaller than the top of the cup. You're going to put these in here you're going to fill them up with either gravel or they make a fancy aquaponics ceramic pellets. Those are good, but they're a little more expensive, and I just use fish gravel. So you're going to put these in here. You're going to make sure there's some holes. Again, you want water flowing through this, and you'll notice that floats right on top. And these would probably be good for, like, some little greens. What I did for my aquaponics was I used an underbed storage container. I placed it on the side of the pond. I drilled quarter inch holes into the side. I took one of the tubings that come off of a pump. Let's just say it was this one. Okay, and that was placed in one corner of the container. 
it moves through the gravel, across the plants, and would flow by gravity out of the holes. So what you had was a movement of water, the roots from the plants absorbed the extra fish waste, and the water came out cleaner than when it went in. And I grew corn, I grew cabbage, we grew broccoli, um, I had some strawberries in here, so we've tried a, a variety of things. And I will be setting this back up, but with this hot summer, our grow time is really not until another month. So I will be setting this up again, and I'll actually make a video and show you of it actually functioning. So that is aquaponics. Again, the fish utilizing the water, moving it through a system, the roots absorb the waste, and the water is cleaned. If you're in a survival situation, you can get solar panels, which I recommend. They can be hooked directly up to a DC pump. So you don't need any electricity. You don't need to worry about the grid being down. If you have a pump, you can move water from the pond into the plants. And you can have a survival garden off the grid and hopefully feed your family. You can also set up a multiple level of this aquaponics. What I would do is get a shelving system, and we get several of these, place them on the shelving system, and just have a pipe that moves the water back to the pond. So you can have many levels of this growing and grow a whole bunch of food. Anyway, this is Nurse Amy. I hope I've given you some ideas. Of course, there's many more that you can use for aquaponics. But good luck. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And our website is www.doomandbloom.net. Thank you very much.